What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to be going over the brand new Diablo, what you need to know about the gauntlet video that dropped a few hours ago. I just got home from work and when I got the notification that this went live, I was super excited just to hear a little bit more details and just kind of what is gonna transpire with the gauntlet, a little bit more info. So we're gonna kind of watch this and react and give some thoughts and just some um, We'll get the conversation going, so to speak. So let's go ahead and hop the, right into this. I don't want to waste too much time, but let's let's uh, let's roll. Competitive game mode called the Gauntlet. My name is Bloodshed, and I'm here with Mark. Bloodshed, Frank. what's up? How you doing, friend? Hey, Bloodshed, doing great. I'm excited to talk about the Gauntlet. I assume you're pretty pumped. As long as I beat everyone in the office, then I think I'll be happy. <laughs> we also have a very special let's guest. Let's beat everybody today, Kaylee Calder. Oh, a Kaylee's there. Nice. Welcome, Kaylee. Hey, it's really, really great to be here with you guys, and I'm uh, yeah, really excited to talk about the gauntlet. Yeah, I was telling Marcus. Kind of loving it's it. Cool Let's go. That we have a developer deliver this information publicly. So shout out to Kaylee and all the developers, all the guests we've had come on. The gauntlet is the first player versus environment competitive game mode coming to Diablo 4. It's part. So this is where like the trials came in because like after the last dev stream and the past shows, it's like where does the trials come from? But. Uh, it's definitely a part of the, the gauntlet. It's a larger so. framework called Trials. That Ooh, pulls they're in there. Together. Solo Barbarian Ladder. Game tab already. The way it works is every seasonal week it's active. Players in World Tier 4 can compete in a static, non-linear dungeon. That basically means it's designed for you to take whatever pathway you see fit and see who can earn the highest score possible. You earn points by killing monsters, killing bosses, opening chests, all within the 8-minute time limit. To promote as much fairness as possible, everything will be the same for everyone, from the map layout, the shrine placement, boss locations, monster effects, all identical. Take your character into battle, solo or with friends. Now, now, a few things here about it being pretty fair. Everything is pretty fair except for the keys. The keys that, that you use to open those chests, you can only get them from certain monsters, and those monsters are random. As we saw from the dev stream, uh, where we had the... Necromancer go first and get zero keys. The Sork went and got like four or five keys. Then the Barbarian went and got two or three keys. So it is completely random in that aspect. But besides that, yes, everything is exactly the same. And you'll be going in with your actual character. So, uh, yeah, just, just to clarify that before people get like crazy about it. Master the gauntlet with 16 different ladders separated by class. 16 size. ladders? How is there 16 ladders? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight ladders. What? Tackle and master the gauntlet with 16 different ladders. Holy. Separated by class, group size, platform, and of course, hardcore and normal. Mode. Oh, so they're, they're, they're separating it by platform as well. So console will, will fight against console players, PC versus PC, et cetera, et cetera. Marcus is now going to take you through the overall design of the gauntlet. Thanks, Ruben. So the gauntlet is designed for mastery. Every week is like a new puzzle for you to figure out. You or your group can develop strategies specific to your build or playstyle. Since the dungeon is non-linear, you will need to decide the best route to take. You're also going to have to figure out the best time to loot chests or to pop pillars. Speaking of pillars, we are adding two unique versions to the gauntlet. The first one we're adding is called the Pillar of Glory. This pillar gives you a score multiplier for the duration of the effect. Oh, that's it's nice. It's used when there's lots of monster density to gain the highest score possible. I Since like that. monster kills grant points. I can definitely see players kiting enemies to these locations to maximize the effect or pairing it with other pillars where possible. Secondly, we're adding a pillar of proving, which respawns all enemies in the area. This one is very fun and hey. So this, this is really, really good to understand that it's in the area because in the dev stream during the showcase, they were just talking about how it respawns all enemies. Uh, and this was interpreted as like all enemies on the map, which is not the case. It's just the, in the significant area of when you pop the actual shrine. Who doesn't love more monsters to kill? These kinds of tools in the gauntlet allow for some creative ways to score points, which could be different from what other players are doing helping to set yourself apart from the competition. And if that wasn't enough for you, in the gauntlet, bosses spawn shrines when they die. We're now entering a shrineception. You're gonna need to bring a barb on your squad. If you get too deep in the gauntlet, you might need a kick. All these additions- No, barbs have small PPs. ...when approaching each weekly gauntlet map. Bloodshed is now gonna walk you through how the leaderboards work. Take it away. 
Once All right, not bad. Your first run of the gauntlet, you'll be placed in a named rank. We're calling them seals. As you attain higher scores, you will gain better seals. Each will have predetermined score thresholds, so you could actually technically skip right to the final seal if you're a beast. The seals are blooded, steadfast, iron-willed, and worthy. The top 1,000 players will be displayed on the leaderboard, and each Tuesday the leaderboard will reset, and depending on your named rank, you will earn an emblem and some loot caches. The gear level you receive scales depending on your seal rank, so worthy players should be getting 925 level items. Ooh, these I like that. That's actually really cool. So you're going to be able to rank up and get these cool ranks at the end of each week, like week seven it showcases here, and it shows your rank you got, your total score, your, or your best score, I should say, and then earn at a weekly reset the seal of worthy, so you can earn these, which the higher level that you go, the better item power you get. So I do wonder if we are going to get really good chances to get uber uniques in these weekly challenges it would be interesting to know uh if they do drop first of all and then second if they have like the overly world drop rate or if there's an increased drop rate at all you notice that there's the leaderboards for the top 1000 heroes as well as the top 10 in the halls of ancients it's really it's cool for how well you're doing remember the leaderboard only houses the top 1000 players for that particular ladder so climbing through the seals is a nice way to indicate where you are in your journey. In addition, the top 10 players each week for every ladder are going to be immortalized forever in the Hall of the Ancients. You know what's crazy? Like, I love that you're going to be immortalized in the Hall of the Ancients for each week. That is something to strive for for players who want to do this. But, like, actually look at the scores. It's kind of, it's kind of unique that... It's only this much. So we, when we saw the Barbarian do like 320,000 on their score, it isn't too far off. And also notice how like everybody's level 100, by the way. Ancients. Yes. You'll be able to go back years later and show your children just how much of a badass you were. Yep, I will too. All right, Marcus, what questions do we have for Kaylee? So for Q&A, we try to think of questions the community might have, or sometimes we just want to see how developers approach certain mechanics. So Kaylee, shrines only spawn when a boss is killed, right? When you're exploring the gauntlet, you're only going to come across pillars. So for the shrines that spawn when a boss is killed, do those change at all? So when you're killing uh, one of the bosses in the gauntlet, they are always going to drop the same shrine every single time. So you can kind of rely on that every time you run through the gauntlet. Ooh. And that shrine is going to be one of the ones you could okay. in the world. So you're going to have some variety there too. So that's interesting. So bosses are always going to spawn a shrine but it's going to be an overworld shrine, meaning like the first boss you kill, let's say it's uh, artillery. That means that every other boss on the map that you kill or in the said dungeon will spawn artillery. But I wonder like what happens if you get greed, like a greed shrine, like that does that, that like does nothing for you. You know what I mean? Like, I wonder if it's just offensive shrines that you get to help with the dungeon or what? I have a question. When people are placed on the leaderboard, can we see what build they're running at the time of completion? This is important. So you will get a shortcut to the player's profile, which will show you the build they currently have, but we do not have a snapshot of their kind of their winning build. See, I um, love that. that. At the time. But we are going to be looking at ways to further um, improve the gauntlet and trials in the future. So if the mode proves really popular, it's definitely something we consider. Nice. So that's really cool. So just like in D3, when you see the ladder, you're going to be able to select somebody's profile. And you. I don't think you're going to be able to see their Paragon nodes, like their Paragon board. But you will be able to see all of their gear and what legendaries or uniques, Ubers, etc. that they're going to be using on what they use to actually clear that. What they mean by like, you won't get, you'll just get the current when they clear, meaning like, as soon as they finish clearing and it's recorded, that's what they get. But if they swap out a gear piece after that, you won't see that. So, Kaylee, do you have any tips and tricks for new players trying out the gauntlet? I know you unlock it once you hit World Tier 4, but is it really something only level 100 players should be attempting? So, yeah, if you're below level 100, you are certainly welcome to give it a go, uh, take a stab of it, throw down the proverbial gauntlet, as they say. Um, it's definitely going to be more of a challenge. It is definitely built with mastery in mind for people who are comfortable in that level 100 space. For newer players, you are going to want to have a build that you both enjoy playing and you have a good understanding of. And you know, you should have plenty of time to do that as you're leveling up. 
And then it's all about bringing that curiosity, figuring out the puzzle that each gauntlet kind of provides in which path you're going to take, um, how you're going to kill all as many monsters as you can to maximize those points, open chests at the right time, all that kind of thing. So, like, here's where it's weird. I love that you're able to go in and do it as soon as you get to world tier four and you can just start doing it, right? If you're below 70, you got a harder challenge to complete it. However, it is going to be better if you are level 100, right? Like you're going to be able to smash the tier 70 mobs way easier and get a higher score and clear it faster. The only way that I like that you can access it as soon as you get to world tier four is because that like when a new season, so when season four comes, you can race, get to level or world tier four, and then go do the gauntlet and try to get to rank one, just like you would do in a brand new season of Diablo three. So that's the only way I like it for newer players. But like right now, if you're trying to do the gauntlet and you're not level 100, two months into the season, I mean, just to be frank, there's probably no way you're going to rank. Uh, it's just probably, unless you're a barbarian, because barbarians, I think at level 20, you're doing, I think 500 million damage at level 20. So small barbs have small PPs. But uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, just 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 to note that. I personally think it's going to be really fun to tackle this as a newer player with friends in a party. The party um, aspect is going to be cool to run it as a team. The best route together. That'll be cool. Really help you hit those seals, and you never know. Maybe you'll surprise yourself. That'll be really cool. Uh, to my knowledge, we can use consumables inside the gauntlet. But can I just swap my skills around? Swap my gear around when I'm inside? Uh, no, you're not going to be able to swap your gear or skills once you go in. So you're going to want to make sure you're fully prepared before you kind of enter. You can use Ooh. consumables so you can kind of maximize your build on the okay. fly as you're playing through. Um, and again, this is one of those things that we'll look at making improvements to or changes to as the gauntlet um, is live and everybody's enjoying it. So we can we can use consumables, meaning we can use elixirs and incense. Incense, I don't think you're going to do anything for us because it's just... Well, I guess there is some incense that would work. So you can use elixirs. So really, now we might actually, guys, have a reason to use elixirs in Diablo 4. Because beside outside the like leveling alternate characters, like there's really I mean, most builds just annihilate T one hundred anyway, so it's not really a, a a need to use them. But now with this, because it's a speed factor and we're trying to kill as many as possible. Elixirs might have a place here. I'm definitely ready for the gauntlet. So big shout out to Kaylee for joining us and providing more perspective. Okay, well, that's that cool. That seals it for today. See that seals it. Nice. I love the still though. The still is nice. Okay, guys. Well, that's the update to the gauntlet. That's really, really cool, man. I'm kind of excited um, for the gauntlet and the horn of trials and just trying it out tomorrow. All the news here. Make sure to like the video, guys. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about all this. I think it's going to be really awesome. I think with Season 2, small setback in Season 3, we're getting uh, the trials here with the gauntlet, and then we're going into a huge update in Season 4. I mean, there's a lot to be excited about with Diablo 4. Uh, so comment down below, guys. Be constructive. Let me know what you guys think about all this stuff. And let's get ready for the trials tomorrow. I'm going to be playing Sork. I'm going to release shortly my build that I'm going to be using. So make sure to check that out as well as a tier list. So, yeah, guys, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, stay gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.